Hello and welcome back to Collaboration Simplified. My name is Shervin Shafi and today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Voice. Now a lot of customers are coming to me these days and saying, hey Sherv, we use Microsoft Teams for chat and channels and file sharing and meetings. Now we're interested in moving from our existing telephony solution to Microsoft Teams for voice. Tell us about that. So in the next videos, I'll be diving in deeper into what this is and how you guys can move over to Microsoft Teams for voice. But at a very high level, the good news is that a lot of people are already using Microsoft Voice because the baseline licensing that Microsoft offers already includes point-to-point -point calling inside your organization for voice and video and even voicemail. So what you really need to do is you need to add the phone system license to an existing E3 agreement that you have with Microsoft, or you can up-level to an E5 agreement with Microsoft, which includes the phone system. Now, if you look at this chart, you'll see that what these features are that basically the phone system license adds. Features like automated attendant or having a phone number, being able to call outside your organization to the PSTN, a variety of different features, right? So there's a tremendous amount of value in the phone system license. So now you've added the phone system license to your tenant. Now you can actually decide which users inside your organization get the phone system license because as we discussed previously, maybe some users are okay with the baseline licensing and they don't need to have these more advanced features. So you get to decide how many of these licenses you need and who you hand them out to. Now, once you hand out this license, one key reason why someone might need a phone system is because they need to have a phone number, you know, an actual phone number, like a 10 digit phone number or area code and seven digits where people from the outside can people can call people inside your organization. That's definitely a requirement of having a phone system. So to get a phone number, we have three different ways that you can connect to Microsoft Teams. You can get phone numbers from Microsoft. You can get phone numbers using a technology called direct routing, which has actually been around for many years now. And it allows you to bring your carrier of choice and connect to Microsoft Teams. Or you can use something called Operator Connect, which just got recently announced. And it's very similar to direct routing in that you can bring your own carrier but it's much more streamlined in terms of the interface inside the Teams Admin Center, as well as the connectivity of how we basically improve the peering between these carriers and us so that you can have better quality or better guarantees and SLAs and support. So we'll talk about those in more detail in the future. But the point is that there are three different ways that you can bring PSTN, Public Switch Telephony Network, or phone numbers inside Microsoft Teams. And by the way, you can mix these three inside your admin center or your tenant. So you don't have to say, I've got to use Microsoft calling everywhere. We would love that you do, but if for some reason you want to use direct routing or operator connect, no problem. You can mix it with calling plan or you can mix it with the other two. So mix and match. It brings a little bit of complexity inside your environment if you choose to do that, but it's certainly possible. And we have many customers doing it today. So Microsoft calling plans is maybe something we can focus on on this call, but the point is that you can actually port numbers over from your existing carrier. So if you have a phone number, if you have tens of thousands of phone numbers for your users today, let's say you use AT&T or Verizon and you want to keep those numbers and you want to use a Microsoft calling plan, there's actually a documented process of how to port those numbers over to a Microsoft calling plan. And so just check out this site, make sure you read through all the details and the forms and any caveats associated with the process. And you basically go through it to get these numbers sent over to Microsoft. And by the way, you can do it not just for users, but also for your conferencing bridges. So if you're using Microsoft meetings and you want to move over uh, some numbers to Microsoft meetings, you can do that using this process as well. So you can port numbers over, and by the way, you can port numbers over not just for Microsoft calling plans, but for direct routing and for Operator Connect as well. So this is kind of an established process that allows you to keep your numbers if you choose to do so. Some people are okay with just bringing a whole set 
of fresh numbers and handing it out to their users. Other people want to keep these numbers, so we have a porting process. On the Microsoft calling plan, not too long ago, maybe four months ago, we had availability in 18 countries around the world. That number today is 28. So we've been growing the number of countries that we have calling plans in quite heavily. And we actually have plans to continue to increase that number very, very much so actually in the near future. So there's a heavy investment from Microsoft in providing calling plans around the world. So the next thing that you need to select is the right calling plan for your users and your organization. So if you take a look at this chart, Microsoft has several different calling plans. There are some that are just focused on domestic and there's one that is international. And the domestic ones range in terms of how many minutes per user per month that you're able to get. It can be 120, 240, 3000. The international one is 3000 for domestic and 600 for international for 196 countries. So if you have that plan, you can pretty much call anyone in the world and you can mix and match these plans. So look at your consumption, figure out how many minutes you expect to use per month and get the right plan for your organization. So the really cool thing about these plans is that we pool all the minutes for you. So if you get the 120 minutes per user per month and you have a hundred, uh, if you have a hundred users, then you multiply a hundred by 120 and that's how many minutes in total we pool together for you for domestic use. And so as your users are making these outbound calls, and, and by the way, these minutes are only used for outbound calls, not inbound calls. As your users are making outbound calls, we basically just grab the minutes from the pool. So anyone that has access, and that's the other key, you as the admin decide what access you want to give for outbound and international to your users. So they just grab whatever minutes they need from the pool and they make these outbound calls. Now, in the event that you miscalculated or you just had overages, then there's something called communications credits, which gets used. Communications credits is this basically this location you go to inside your admin center for teams and you set up this invoicing mechanism where if you run out of minutes, we basically charge you per minute at these negotiated rates to different countries. Each, each country has its own rate. For, so calling from the US to London has a certain rate and you can check out this rate sheet that is basically telling you what these rates are. But communication credits has an auto replenish amount and a trigger amount. So if it falls below say $100, then you can set it to replenish for $1,000. And then once that pool of money gets exhausted for your usage, then it gets triggered when it goes to $50 and re replenishes. So it just kind of happens. So whatever makes sense, right? In terms of maybe you're okay with these rates and you just want to have communication credits, or maybe you want to have a plan. I have some customers that want to make international calls, but they're, they don't, they're not heavy international users. So they don't need the international plan. So they just get domestic and then they set up communications credits and they're good with the negotiated rates that we have to make these international calls. So you kind of figure what makes sense, but definitely these calling plans are the next thing that you need to figure out when it comes to basically providing PSCN access for your users. I hope you found this session useful. There is so much to talk about when it comes to telephony and phone systems at Microsoft, and we've only scratched the surface. We kind of focused just on calling plans today, but in the next videos, I'll be talking about direct routing, uh, operator connect, analog connectivity, all kinds of really cool stuff as you consider moving over to Microsoft Teams for your enterprise voice. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.